Hi, welcome to the video. Uh, I took some time off over the summer, went away with my family, which was amazing, but no uploads recently. So I'm going to put that right now. And now I'm back with a vengeance. Hopefully I'll aim for, I don't know, one or so a week. Not sure how I'll get on, but between now and Christmas, let's see how many I can get uploaded. Um, not all the videos are going to be about the deluge. I've said this before. There's a whole bunch of kit here, a whole bunch of ideas that I've got, a uh, bunch of software, some iPad things I want to talk about. But this one is is about the deluge again it's about the synth engine though specifically about how the synth engine is set up and the capabilities and the features that it has the deluge has a, a great sort of amount of videos and feedback for the sequencing and uh, the workflow and the sampling but not so much about the synth engine and since version two of the software has come out that's brought in analog emulated waveforms for the oscillators which makes a massive difference actually um, and it also offers various forms of synthesis and parameter locked abilities to change the synth settings on a step-by-step -step basis which kind of adds it's not specifically a synthesizer thing but it does add an enormous amount of um, value to the sounds that you can get out of the box so this isn't going to be about how to make awesome sounds on it it's going to give you an overview of what's available within the box and hopefully set you off course to uh, make your own sounds or to edit the sounds that are already on board or if you're thinking of buying a deluge it gives you a background into what's available on it. So let's go to the deluge. This has just been switched on. It starts with a blank song and patch zero of the synthesizer, which sounds like that. So this is effectively an empty starting point. Each one of these buttons, or most of them, have a parameter assigned to them, which you can use to change the sound. So if I hold a note down and press one of these buttons, this one, for example, is the frequency of the filter. Then adjusting this knob allows me to set the cutoff frequency on the sound. There's nothing that you can't do with these buttons that you, that you can do with uh, diving through menus. So, for example, if I hold synth down and push this button, this gives me a menu option. So we have oscillator 1, oscillator 2, noise, which is the third oscillator, um, low-pass filter, high-pass filter. If I go to the low-pass filter, select the frequency... It's exactly the same effect, and you'll notice that the frequency light is flashing in the in the pad. So I can either do it by jumping through menus, if that's what you, li you like, or I can just remember what pad I need, hit the pad, and I'm there already. What you actually find when you're playing with this stuff is that you get to know your old favorite useful pads, frequency cutoff, oscillator waveform, that kind of stuff, the envelope settings. And it is much quicker than you'd imagine to get your head around and remember roughly where you are in order to just use the pads to go in and edit things. And it becomes much more tactile. Um, you can do the menus, like I say, but in general, jumping around with the, with the pads I think makes life a lot easier. There are on the deluge itself um, little words representing what the pads do that are, are kind of printed on the board. Um, these are semi-future proofed in that at the moment Synstrom are releasing tons and tons of new updates and some brilliant features kind of all the time really. There's a whole bunch due to come out in the next version of the software. Um, but pretty much they're they're future-proofed. They are written fairly kind of lightly with no backlights, so they're really there as more of a guide than anything else. However, my, my choice would always be to kind of jump around and press the buttons. If you hold shift down, it's the same effect. So the thing with uh, holding a button down and pressing the parameter, you can hear the sound coming out. Whereas if you hold shift down, you don't hear the sound. So if you're in a live situation, it's probably easier to use shift. If you're here, because I'm playing the sound all the time, it's much easier to do that. Go, okay, now I'll change resonance and so forth. Okay, so what we'll do is we'll reset this sound to a completely raw template sound. So you literally go shift synth and it says new. Now we have a very plain vanilla sound. There are three types of oscillator, or three types of sounds synthesis going out on the deluge. There is subtractive synthesis, which is the same as most analog synths. You have oscillators that make a noise, filters that 
that removes st- parts of that noise, the treble or the bass or the middle, and then envelopes that make the shape of the filter or the shape of the volume of the sound change over time. That's fairly standard. It's pretty easy to use as well. It's not very complex to get your head around. And if you have a synthesizer noise in your head that you want to emulate, it's relatively easy to get the sound by programming this when you know where you're going with it. So you can picture something in your head or hear something in your head and get a a close approximation to it fairly easily. The two other synthesis methods are FM synthesis, which is like the, well, originally came out with the Yamaha DX7s into into sort of the major major public appreciation. Um, That is where you also have oscillators, but one modulates another oscillator. So effectively, it um, changes that sound very, very fast. You're mixing you're mixing the two oscillators together effectively without going into huge detail. Um, you're using one to modulate another. That gives you uh, more clanky noises, really, more metallic, um, cleaner, more deep sound. So the 80s bass lines were very often DX7 based, um, but also the piano sounds, the bell noises, that kind of stuff. The thing with FM, though, is it's very hard to get a sound from scratch to where you want to be. If you sit down and say, right, today we're going to make a piano sound, good luck, unless you are an amazing boffin FM programmer, and certainly I'm not one of those, you probably won't get there. Uh, You're better off, in my mind, experimenting, tweaking, seeing what noises come out, or taking a sound that's very close to where you want to be and just editing that fractionally. But small moves can make big changes in the sound. The third and last method of synthesis is ring modulation. Ring modulation is famous because Doctor Who uses ring modulation, or used to anyway, back in the 60s and 70s to make the Dalek voice. So that very warbly, harsh, nasty kind of noise is done using ring modulation. That's also oscillator based, but rather than having side by side in a a subtractive synthesis method or one modulating another in FM, this time they multiply the two oscillators together in a big mash in the middle. Um, And that gives you also some quite harsh, nasty, vibrant noises um, and some some fairly simpler noises which just have a bit of an edge to them. Again, slightly hard to work out where you're going before you start. So if you suddenly think, right, uh, I'm going to make a smooth Dalek noise, you're going to be doing it more by luck than judgment, I think. You'll know roughly which direction you're heading in, but not quite the journey to take to get there, if you like. So let's just take a look at the subtractive side of things and just go through some of the options that are available, see what they do to the sounds. Um, And then we'll take a quicker look at the end about FM and ring mod, because they are slightly more random, but do bring another palette of noises and sounds that are missing on a lot of other synths. So back to our deluge. Here is our vanilla sound. Um, Subtractive synthesis has two oscillators on board the deluge, so you can have two major sound sources mixed together that can then go on to make your final sound and be affected. There's a third oscillator type as well, which is the noise oscillator on the top, which can be mixed in. So this vanilla sound, this is the level of oscillator one. If I turn it down, we don't hear anything. If I turn it up, oscillator one. Oscillator two, the level is zero. Turn it up. You start to hear a bit of phasing and flanging going on because basically you've turned up two oscillators exactly the same and they're just phasing with each other. So we'll turn that back down to zero and we're literally listening to just one oscillator with no filtering going on. 50 is generally the maximum level for most of the parameters within the deluge or minus 50. So a lot of the parameters will go into negative numbers, not a volume, of course, it can't go below zero, but the effect of some envelopes and filters can drop below zero and effectively work kind of kind of in reverse. So our oscillator turned up to 50 can be transposed to wherever we are. I'm going to knock it down an octave. And it has a waveform. And the waveforms can be square, analog square, saw, analog saw, sample, which means you've loaded your own waveform in or your own sample to play with, in, which means you're playing a live uh, audio feed into the deluge and using it as an oscillator in real time. There's a video called Fat Oscillators, I think, that I did, uh, which shows a little bit of that. And also maybe the sampling one that I did. Check back. Um, there's some, some more info on that. Um, and a sign and a triangle, which are a lot sort of smoother and more laid back. So I'm going to go with a square wave. 
Now there are two, they do sound extremely similar. There is a square wave and there's the new analog square wave, analog emulated. Now they do sound very similar. The same with the sawtooth, which is a sawtooth standard, perfect sawtooth, and the analog version of it. The analog versions take those sounds and they make them move a little bit. They make them have a few more harmonics. They make them just sound a little bit more crunchy. And that's because with the older analog synths, the beauty of those things were they used to get warm and they'd move out of tune and the oscillators would never be perfectly in sync with each other or in tune. And that actually wasn't a bad thing. It gave the sound a warm, deep, rich, moving quality as everything just kind of moved around and, and, and sort of uh, just, just transitioned amongst itself. When you take a waveform and you create it digitally in the deluge or in any other sampler, if you just make it an absolutely perfect triangle or sawtooth or square wave, it's just not going to move. It's just going to be absolutely perfectly flat. And if you put two together, like we heard, the most you're going to get is a little bit of phasing if the if the phase of the uh, if the phase of those waveforms is is kind of slightly out, but that's it. You're you're kind of making it louder or phasing. There's no difference. Whereas if you begin to off tune them, and if you use samples that in the first place are inherently unstable, which is what we're using there, then the movement becomes a lot more real and realistic. They do sound very similar when you play them back to back. And the real effect is only noticed in a larger way when you start playing with a filter or you start distorting or decimating or, um, you know, affecting them deeply, putting up a lot of resonance. Then you begin to notice a much more of a difference. You can hear a difference, maybe not on this video, but it's very, very subtle. It does have an effect, though, later on when you're really mangling the sound up. So, back again to the deluge. I'm going to pick this analog square wave. Um, the other stuff that we've got is um, the phase and the re-triggering. So here we can force the, um, the phase of the re-trigger. That means that where the waveform starts to play can be set. So it might not start right at the beginning. So if you can think of a, of a waveform that looks like this. Every time you hit a key, it starts from zero and it's going up and down, a bit like your speaker going in and out. That's the waveform that you see. Um, so you can make it start midway through or up near the top or down near the bottom or wherever you want in the phase of that. And that has an effect when you're mixing waveforms together. If you don't want these waveforms to be locked and phasing, then you can shift the phase of one to change that sort of phase point, if you like. So that's about as difficult as it gets, I think. Um, the second oscillator, which we'll come and have a look at, let's turn down the first. Nothing going on. Let's turn the second oscillator up. I'm going to make that, leave it at the same octave, and I'm going to make that a sawtooth, an analog sawtooth. There you go, same octave, no major shakes, and then we'll turn up the other one. Now we've got a fatter, Slightly fatter sound now. We've got no phasing because we've set them at different octaves. Um, so they're, they're playing quite nicely. The other oscillator that's available, like I said, is this noise, which we can turn up. I'm going to leave that off for now. But that can be useful for percussive effects. You don't need to run the main oscillators. You can simply run a white noise if you want. It's a useful little thing. Now, that constitutes really a voice. So if you think, or if I think about the deluge and a synth noise like that, we've used two oscillators and playing them is a voice. So every time I press a key, that is launching two oscillators that we can hear. And those two oscillators are at different octaves with different waveforms, but they constitute that voice. One of the great things about the deluge is that you can stack those voices up. So you can say, all right, well, when I press a note, Rather than just playing one voice, I want you to play four versions of that voice all on top of each other. Now, you're going to get the same thing that we just got by putting two oscillators with the same settings together initially. All you're going to do is kind of make it louder and a bit more phasey. It's effectively getting four deluges, each with this sound, and pressing the buttons all at the same time. But what you can do then is that you can uh, slightly detune each of those voices away from each other, emulating that analog synth again, so that rather than being absolutely locked, they're just moving and they can be, you know, phasey and flangey and, and just apart from each other and potentially panned in different directions as well, perhaps. So the whole thing becomes a lot more rich. So let's just take a look at that um, and see that effect. And then we can look at the filtering and the envelopes and some of the other effects that we can use uh, on, this, on this sound that we've created.
So here's the sound that we've created with our two oscillators again. And we can here increase the number of voices. At the moment, there's one voice, which is two oscillators, like I said. Two voices, three voices, four voices. You can go to eight. Now you can hear every time, let's leave it at four for now. Every time I play it, there's definitely something going on. One sounded like that. Four sounded like that. No major shakes, though. You know, you are literally playing four identical things all in time with each other, and it's affecting the phase of the of the sound that's coming out. If we, however, flip to here and change the detune between those voices, then suddenly that's off. That's on. I reckon about maybe there if you want a rich one. So every time I'm now playing a key, a voice has two oscillators. There are four, four voices, so eight oscillators are playing. And of those eight oscillators, every pair of oscillators is out of tune with each other. So we have an eight oscillator synth, which we can play polyphonically. So if I then play four notes, we've got four times eight oscillators, 32 oscillators. So suddenly we're seeing that the sound on the deluge is getting quite thick, actually. We've done nothing extra than put up a bunch of oscillators and detune them slightly and change some octaves. But we're already getting a much richer, warmer sound than I actually expected when I first started looking at it. So what we can do now is we can take this sound and we can change the filtering on it. So this is our core sound. That's kind of a sound in, in completeness. Every single frequency that we need should be in there. And what we start doing now is carving out uh, parts of that sound to produce the sound that we want. So if we want to dull it down and make it warmer, I select the frequency, which I was looking at first of all. There you go. So I've got a slightly warmer pad going on. I can change the resonance junction with a filter, resonance gives it that slightly harsher resonant for the enough top end. It's effectively boosting the frequencies around about the cutoff point, which doesn't really matter. It just really matters that you know what it actually sounds like when you try it out. There's also a high pass filter. High pass will do the opposite of this other low pass filter. It will allow the top end through and cut off the bottom end. So if we turn that up, you'll start to lose bass. So what we've done there is we've used this cutoff filter to allow bottom end through but no top, and this high pass filter to allow high end through but no bottom. And using them in conjunction like that, we've got a band pass filter, which is effectively only letting through a little space in the middle. But I quite like it um, with the bottom end in. Oh, incidentally, the high pass filter has a resonance as well. So I can make some really interesting noises with that. However, I'm going to leave the high-pass filter off and we'll do a very kind of standard analog patch. So we now have pretty decent sound going on and we can use the envelopes now to take that sound and mould it over time. So typically you'd have one envelope working that will uh, handle the volume of the sound so that it might fade in and then go for a bit and then tail away at the end. And you'd use another similar envelope to change maybe the filter pattern. So you might have it bright at the beginning and then fading away um, with the filter as well as the volume. So have a look. We have two waveforms built into this deluge alongside the two oscillators. The first waveform by default is set to do volume. So we have an attack, a decay, a sustain, and a release. Attack is the amount of time it takes to fade the sound in. So if I turn it up, you can hear it fading in, or you can hear it coming straight in. Release is the other end. It's the time it takes the sound to fade away. So if you want a nice pad, you probably want to fade it up very slightly and fade it out quite slowly. In the middle, you have uh, decay and sustain. The decay simply, as soon as it's faded in at the beginning, it will decay 
to the sustain level. So if you just want a loud blip at the beginning, a bit like a piano maybe, the piano kind of looks like that. That's the attack. It decays to the sustain and it releases. So you've got some control over, over that. With a pad sound, um, we can use a little bit of sustain and, and decay, I guess. So if you set the sustain level here to 25, halfway down, and the decay to a bit lower, you'll hear it if you play a chord. It will fade in and then fade out slightly. I can make it more marked by turning that sustain down. But for now, we'll leave it up the top, we don't care. Now the next thing that we can look at is using an envelope to affect the filter. So if we go back to our filter setting, what I'd like it to do is something like this. Except I want it to do it without having to turn the knob. So, we'll put that there. Down this side, these pads set uh, what modulates what so for example you have the envelopes you have lfos which are low frequency oscillators that we'll have a look at in a second side chain note values or random velocities all this stuff all these things are effects if you like that can be applied to adjust oscillators or filters various functionality so it's probably easiest if i show you exactly what that means so we've got the frequency set here that's the frequency of the filter and you want that to change over time so we're going to connect that to um, envelope number two. So if I push envelope number two, you'll see that the filter light is still flashing. Envelope two is flashing fast, and it's set to zero. That means that envelope two is now assigned to change the filter value, but it's affecting it zero. So it's not going to have any effect whatsoever. However, if we increase this, you can now hear that it's going up and fading down. That's the effect of the envelope. So that's kind of what I want. It needs a bit of an adjustment. So we're going to go back to the frequency. I'm going to turn it down so the start point is lower. Cool. Then I'm going to change um, envelope two, the attack and the decay and the sustain and the release. So if you look at envelope two, we're going to bring the attack down to zero. We're going to bring the sustain up a bit, and the decay needs to be longer. A short decay gives me that. A long decay gives me that. We'll have a bit of release. So we've now used an envelope to affect the filter over time, and we've used, also used the first envelope to affect the volume of the sound over time. So that is a very basic synth patch that you've started with. Um, other things that you can do is you can use an LFO to affect something. So for example, maybe um, let's affect the filter as well with an LFO. Now an LFO is a low frequency oscillator that just kind of does this much more slowly and it can turn things up and down. It can be smooth or it can be square shaped. Um, let's just see what the effect is. So again, put back over here. We're going to go back to the frequency and you can see that this light's flashing here showing me that the envelope is affecting it. We're also going to pick uh, LFO2, which is this one. So LFO2 is affecting is not affecting anything at the moment it's set ready to affect the frequency of the filter but it's not affecting it by anything because this is zero if we turn this up you can hear the effect of the lfo moving the filter just up and down as well as the envelope now lfo settings are down here so we can increase the speed you can hear the sound comes in quite bright and still fades away. That's a bit over the top, so we'll turn down the level of the LFO. So we go to frequency, 
Um, and you can set uh, the waveform, triangle, sine, sawtooth, square. You can hear it's just pulsing like that. You'll see um, when I push this button by accident, it says soon. Those are buttons that aren't yet implemented within the operating system. That will be coming soon. Um, there have already been some of those done as we, you know, in, in previous releases, stuff that wasn't available to start with. Um, you'll also see occasionally um, something that says can't. There you go. Can't means that this, this uh, parameter is not applicable to this sound. So typically that would mean that you're working on a subtractive synthesis sound, which is what we're doing here, and then you go and try and change an FM setting. It's not an FM synthesis sound, so it's just going to tell you I can't do that. Those are really the only messages that you see. So, here is our amazing sound that we've had from scratch. We can go back and just see some of the defaults. If you take a look at zero, which is this fairly standard sort of bass sound, if you look at the way it's been put together, um, go to oscillator one, is at 50 volume, oscillator two is at 39 volume. Oscillator 1 is not transposed at all. Oscillator 2 is down an octave. This is pretty similar to where we were a moment ago. Oscillator 1 is a sawtooth. Oscillator 2 is a square wave. Again, very similar to what we had, except these aren't using the analog versions of the waveforms. Um, and there's nothing particularly else clever going on. We have filter that's being affected by the envelope that we had and by note and velocity data. Now, note and velocity data are coming when you're going to play this from an external keyboard or if you set those parameters within the sequencer. Note is literally the note. So a low note will have no effect on the filter. A high note will make the filter brighter. And velocity is how hard you hit the note. So a hard hit will make the sound brighter and a lower hit will dull it down a bit. That's exactly the way a piano, for example, works. If you hit it hard, it starts brighter. The low notes are duller than the top notes. So those, the human ear is used to hearing things like that, you know, more tinkly top ends and duller soft sounds. And so you can emulate that much the same way as you can do with most other synthesizers as well. It's just quite neatly laid out here. So you can instantly see that for this, this uh, cutoff frequency of the filter, I've got these things affected it. So there's nothing else particularly clever going on actually with this sound. It's not far off what we had. Our, our one ended up I think an octave higher um, and not quite as warm sounding. We can see how many voices it's using, four, and we can see the detune on them, ten. So I think we had four and thirty or something before. Increasing the detune gives you this much warmer, wobblier sound. But that's not bad. And the envelopes are fairly standard. If we go and look at envelope, that the release of envelope one is very low. If we opened it up, it would fade away slower. Also, I think the, the filter is also being set to envelope two like we had ours. So if we increase the decay, then the meow noise happens a lot slower. So let's put that back. So one good way is to literally go through and have a look at some of the patches and see how they're set up, really. I mean, there couldn't really be a simpler sound as that, which is the kind of default starter patch, but it's still got, you know, it's got some weight to it. It's a very synthy, squelchy noise. Um, and you can go in and you can affect all that stuff. What we haven't touched yet, and none of these presets so far have used them, is that on board is um, saturation, uh, bit crushing, and decimation. And these three things are effects that can be applied to the sound. So let's let's take this basic patch and apply some saturation to it. Suddenly you're getting a much sort of nastier noise. Yeah, it's a lot louder as well. But it's got some it's got some balls to it. Let me take that down again. So that's called saturation, it's a distortion uh, effect. This is bit crushing. So similar actually in terms of 
been changing the sound. This one is um, quite warm, I would say. This one is more digital sound, which have their own quality. And then lastly, we have Decimation. Which is just decimating the sound. You're effectively kind of... It's almost a bit crushing effect, actually. Although the other one is called bit crushing. So used in combination, which is perfectly possible, you can do all sorts of crazy stuff. Um, they certainly make the oscillators sing a bit more and the whole thing become just a little bit more uh, nasty sounding and raw. Um, and just in themselves, they're going to take the sounds that are coming out of the oscillators and really turn them into something special if that's what you are looking for. Um, other stuff that you can do within here uh, on the subtractive side of things um, are is things like um, affecting the filters and the envelopes and the oscillators with not just LFOs and um, envelopes, which is what we looked at, but you can also use settings like sidechain as well. Now, sidechain is a really funky thing that the Deluge has which will basically look for kick drum beats on a drum track and then you can tell it to duck uh, synth sounds or other drums underneath those kick drums. So side change is used throughout, particularly EDM, where you just want the kick to punch through and to do that, you literally just turn down everything else a little bit quite fast underneath the kick every time it hits. Side change is built into here and gives you an effect that you can use every time the kick drum occurs to do anything. You could use it not just to turn the volume down on, on the synth, you can use it to turn the filter down on the synth, which is quite a good way of ducking stuff sometimes, or turn the low pass, uh, high pass filter up. So it's losing bottom end. You keep the top end, but you keep the, the, the bottom end just lifts to allow the kick to punch through. So I can demonstrate that very quickly as an example of uh, something, the deluge, a little trick the deluge has, which, which other synth boxes like this don't. Okay, so let's come back to the deluge. Let's pick this default sound number zero. I'm going to go down an octave and I'm going to program in a very simple Giorgio Moroder style bass line. So I've just switched that key to, from major to minor. There's a good bass line going. Flip into song mode. I'm going to mute that and I'm going to go into another track, change it to a kit, find a kick drum. There's my kick drum. So now I have a kick drum and the bass line. We can then take the bass line, go back in there, and I can take uh, the level of the bass line, as in the overall master volume, which is here, set to 50. And I can modulate that with the side chain. So side chain is this one over here. So now you can see that the volume is flashing slowly. The side chain is flashing fast. If I turn it up, you can hear now, I go back into the song. But the bass line is dropping out with the kick drum. If I go into the kick drum and simply turn it all down, um, kick drum's still playing, but the volume's on zero, but you can hear the bass line now dropping in and out. So I'm going to go and put this back um, by going into the song, into the bass line, into the volume, and the side chain, which I'm going to turn to zero. And instead, I'm going to go to the frequency, to affect that with the side chain. So here we go, I'm going to hold the side chain down. Kind of cool. And maybe the resonance too. There you go. You'll notice here that you can affect things positively or negatively. So now if we come back into our song again, come out of there, switch the kick drum back up. So here's this one. We've suddenly got a much more lively feel going. Um, and on the drums and what other drums we've got. Swing. 
and it all goes horribly wrong. But you can kind of see what I mean. As soon as I stop the drums, we've lost the side chain. So if I wanted the side chain to carry on without the drums, I'd have to have a, a hidden kick drum track on here with the volume turned down, just like I was showing you, and then that, you, you use that to affect the side chain and everything else. But kind of a good start. And these, these kind of effects things can be applied to anything within the machine. So it doesn't have to be the filter. It could be the pitch, for example. Right, so anything else that's going on? Um, I think the other thing to show before we go and look at a very quick insight into the FM and ring mod is the way that you can do parameter locking on the synth sounds as well. I think Electron call it parameter locking, but it's basically setting parameters for the synth to change as every beat of the sequencer passes. So again, I'll, a very, very simple demonstration of that. We'll pick a really simple sound and then we'll make it move over the course of a, a very simple pattern like this. Maybe use something just that, you know, that we've, we've set up already. Okay, so let's load up a new song again. Basic start. Let's see if we can find another sound. That'll do. We're not going to do anything particularly clever here. Um, I'm going to write in a, a pattern. Let's see, in a minor key. We'll change the filter on it. Now, stop that for a second. Each one of these can be affected uh, on a step-by-step -step basis. So, this one here, if I uh, assign um, a parameters to these golden knobs, what I can do is I can set those parameters on a step-by-step -step basis. So, for example, in the same way that I hit frequency here, I can set frequency to be affected by one of these, and then I can adjust this to do that. I can set any of the parameters on here to be affected. These, are com these come with some default settings, which are volume, pan, cutoff frequency, and resonance, which are actually the ones I want, attack, release, decay time, all that kind of stuff. But at the end here are some custom ones. So if you wanted the release uh, of one of the envelopes to be affected, you can just learn the release setting into this button here, and then one of the knobs will change it. So if I set it to cutoff and resonance, and what I can do is I can hold the first button down and I can change the settings. And this one. This one. So each one of these I'm setting kind of pretty random uh, filter and resonance settings. There you go. So you can see now, if I look closely at the frequency, the frequency is changing on a, on a beat by beat basis. Every time there's a note, I've set new frequency. If we see the resonance, that's changing as well. And you can see the frequency and the resonance are also being represented by these level meters here. So again, I can put a very quick um, kick drum in there just to give it some timing. Uh, let's have a look. One here, kit, that one that we had before. We'll start with something that's basically kind of getting to something a bit more interesting than we had before. Simply by mute the drums. Simply by using onboard parameter locking, we've already introduced quite a nice groove to that. Makes the whole thing work a little bit better. So, you know, it's not just creating the sounds that you're going to use to play a pad within the deluge. It's creating a sound that then can be uh, modified over the course of its pattern to give you this really nice effect. Now, I can record that five different times with five different sounds with five slightly different modulations going on if I want and then record them all internally on the deluge to a new track 
a single audio file that I can then add effects to or process. Um, so you're really not limited to one track per synth. I can even record just the effects and play that in as a new track. So I have an audio track of the synth and an audio track of the effects I've set up and I can fade between the two. So the world really is, is your oyster. Um, another way of actually setting up these modulation settings is you can use an external keyboard to do this. So for example, there's a matrix brute in front of me. If I stop this for a second, um, what I'll do is I'm just gonna open another synth sound anything will do, something that we started with. All of these controls send MIDI data as well as affecting the synth itself. And the Deluge receives MIDI data and can map the controls that it's sent uh, into edit the sound. So here's a basic zero sound again that we started with. I told you this wasn't going to be about making amazing new sounds. We're just looking at the possibilities. If I then hit frequency, which is what we did before. So let me just show you. I've hit the frequency button. And this is now, as we've seen many times before now, affecting the frequency. If I hold the learn key down, and then I come and I adjust this knob up here, on the deluge as I do it, you'll see that it changes to learn. And this knob now that I've got up here, that I did, is now affecting the filter. So as I turn the knob here, I'm affecting the filter down there. And I can do the same with the resonance. If I select resonance, if I hold learn down, and then if I go up and I turn a different knob up here, this one here below it, then I'm now affecting the resonance. And these kind of changes can be played live or recorded. So again, if I now come back over to the deluge side of things, if I put in a really simple pattern going on here now, in the background of my song, I'm just going to mute the previous pattern. What I can do now, if you look at the matrix brute, Now I can even record that by turning this knob on the matrix brute. If I hit record down here, you can see this, this hand here. That's now playing what I've just recorded into it. So if I uh, take record off and I look at the frequency again, that's just been recorded in by me playing on the matrix brute in front of me. Um, and I don't have to record it, obviously. I can use that live to trigger various parts. So I now have within my song, if I come back out again. It's not half bad, really. Three parts. Couldn't get much more simple. But you can hear the movement that's going on by using parameter lockings within the machine um, to really give it some, some spice, really. Okay, so almost over. That's the subtractive synthesis part of things. I want to take a really quick look at FM synthesis and ring modulation, which are your other two options, just to see what they do. I'm not going to go into detail on how it works, just to see what happens when you experiment a tiny bit. So let's get back into the deluge, look at the FM, look at the ring mod, and, uh, and that'll be it. So coming back, I'm going to start a brand new song again, brand new synth. So... As we've been many times, here is our vanilla synth sound. Uh, I'm going to turn it down an octave. Just because I like it down an octave. Um, and we're going to put the synth mode, this one, from subtractive FM ring mod. So I'm going to leave it on FM. Very sort of sine wavy. And then we can start turning up those oscillators. Turn up the feedback. start messing with it. And turn up oscillator number two. Maybe pitch it up a bit. And then we still have our release and attack and envelopes. Yeah. 
so you have a very quick bad example of how to make a noise out of an FM synth. You can hear that it is a bit more clangy. Um, it's not pure crystal bell tones, which you can also get out of this stuff. It's different to analog synthesis, though. There is a there is a digital feel to it. It is there's a cleanliness to the kind of distorted noise that comes with it, and you can use sounds like this very nicely to cut through in the mix. Um, it just needs a lot of experimentation in my mind to come up with anything good having done that. Um, but look at some of the preset sounds and edit them away. See what happens. It's a simplistic uh, FM synthesis. I think there's only two oscillators involved here. Um, whereas, you know, the DX7 I think had six. Um, you can, though, multiply everything up again with, with a number of voices. You can stack these voices up until you run out of processing power on the deluge. So you're really not limited in that way. Um, but yeah, it, it, it's, a, it's probably an overlooked thing, I think, within the deluge at the moment. And then lastly, on the ring mod side, um, we'll go back. Let's start again. So we'll come out of there. Brand new sound. And we'll go to the synth mode. And we'll set ring mod. Now, Ring Mod uh, is all about the um, pitch of the oscillators. What you're actually doing is you're multiplying the pitch of these two oscillators together. Um, and actually what comes out the other end is the sum and the difference of the pitch, but it doesn't really matter. What you end up sounding like generally is a Dalek. So if we um, add this and we'll turn up the pitch of this one. And we'll look at the pitch of this one. got our filters there we go and our resonance so really what you've got here is another type of subtractive synth it's it is uh, a subtractive synth with rather than your basic main oscillators mixing together and making a noise you've got two oscillators multiplying together and doing pretty weird and wonderful frequency things and then going through the filters and the envelopes so by altering the transpose if we come back and so you can see what i'm doing like i've been fiddling with then you have all sorts of weird and wonderful source oscillator sounds which you can then affect by playing with the filter and the resonance and again all of these are editable within um within a pattern so if i literally just do what i did before if i go in now and on a pattern by pattern basis change sorry, on, a, on, a, on a note by note basis just change these weird and wonderful settings. Again, we've taken something that's really not that interesting and started moving it really nicely throughout the track. And I won't bother putting the kick drum underneath it just to prove a point. So there you go. Um, in a nutshell, that is really an exploration into your available synth options on the Deluge. And who's to say the next software release won't bring us a whole bunch more? Um, if anyone's particularly interested in going deeper into the subtractive or the FM or the ring mod, I'm quite happy to make a video um, just concentrating on that. I think something that tries to encompass everything and shows you how to make an awesome bass sound or an awesome lead sound, it's just going to go on for hours. So I will do anything sort of specialist-wise on a little piece-by-piece -piece basis if anyone is interested. Please leave a like uh, or a comment or both. Subscribe if you can, because um, every little bit helps. And there's, a, there's been a, a growing number of people who seem to be following this and some good reports back and good feedback. So thank you very much if you enjoyed it. I'm sorry if you didn't. Um, and I will see you for the next video. Thanks again. Bye-bye.